Hey YouTube fans, this is Rick. I'm starting something new. In addition to my video tutorials, I'm also going to start making available copies of database templates that I've built for my lessons and for my other clients. I've got a lot of these databases just lying around, and lots of people have asked me about them. They don't necessarily want to learn how to build them from scratch, but they would like to use them or incorporate them into their own database projects. So, I'll be putting these templates on my website and including a short walkthrough video like this one to show you what they do. This is the first template. It has to do with calculating loan amortizations, which are monthly payments for a mortgage or a car loan or whatever. Check it out, and if you'd like to download a sample copy of this database, just click on the link in the description below the video. Thanks, and enjoy. Welcome to an Access Database Template Walkthrough brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm Richard Rost. This loan amortization database was designed to get around some of the problems that simple Excel spreadsheets have. Now you can calculate the monthly payment based on the loan amount, the interest rate, and the number of years, and Excel can do that just fine. And you can generate a full amortization schedule. However, one of the problems I always have with Excel is that rounding error. Sometimes if you don't round properly, that last final payment can be off by a cent or two, sometimes even a couple of cents. So this database takes care of that by rounding properly. I've also covered loan amortization in some of my other access classes like Access 324, but that was only a very simple amortization schedule. This database shows the beginning balance and ending balance for each period and the principal and interest for each payment period as well. This database will track each payment made and it will allow you to assign payment overages to go against the principal balance of the loan. So for example, if their monthly payment is only $1,000 and they pay $1,200, you can put that extra $200 toward paying down the principal. The interest amount for each month is automatically recalculated if that happens. And the database keeps track of putting where all the payments belong and to which payment period principal versus interest, and so on. Now let's take a quick walk through the database and I'll show you all the features. When you first open up the database, you'll see a previous sample loan that I had entered in. You'll see the loan information's up here, the interest rate, number of years, loan amount. The individual payments go down here. Up to the right, you'll see the total due as of today's date and the regular payments made in the past due. This purple area over here is a payment tracking history, so you can see the exact payments that the person has made on the loan. And down on the bottom here, you'll see all the totals. I'll go over what all these things are in just a second. Let's enter in a new loan. Let's come down here to the bottom set of navigation buttons and go to next record. There's only one record in the database to start with. This will go to a new blank record. The bottom set of navigation buttons are for each loan. This set here are for the individual payments. You can turn this off if you want to. Because when you have multiple payments in here, you'll get a scroll bar to go up and down. But I'll start by entering in the loan amount, let's say 10000 the interest rate, how about 5%, and the number of years. I'm just going to put one year in here. You can put as many as you want. Now, as soon as you type all that information in, you'll see the payment, the monthly payment, is automatically calculated for you. And the number of payments is simply just the number of years times 12. Now, if enough people want to see it, a future modification would be to allow a non-monthly payment. If you have bi-monthly payments or a quarterly payment, that could easily be entered into the database. It doesn't support it right now as it is because there are some other calculations. But if enough people want to see that, I can certainly upgrade the database to include that in the future. You can change the start date right here if you want to using the little calendar. Let's say it started in November. Now, the Calculate Payment button really isn't needed. I put that on there when I was building the form. There's an After Update event in each one of these fields here that automatically recalculates the payment if this changes. So if this goes to 6, for example, you can see the payment automatically updates. When you have the loan information that you want in there, come down here and click on Create New Schedule. This will create a brand new payment schedule. You'll get a warning message because if you have previous data in there, this will erase that data. So make sure you don't click on this afterwards. All right, I'll say yes, and you'll see all the payment information automatically fills into the database. 
if you have a long mortgage, like a 30-year mortgage, that can take a few seconds to run. I wanted to do this without using advanced programming concepts like record sets, which would make things a little more elegant, but I'm just using do command, go to control, and go to record commands in a loop to simply add these records one at a time. There are more elegant solutions like direct SQL injection, stuff like that, but I went with a simple option. It would be easier for people to follow along with. So here we have the payment number, the due date of each payment, the beginning balance at the beginning of that period, the amount due. Now, one of the things that aggravates me about most loan amortization templates, whether they're Excel spreadsheets or Access databases, is that they always come up with rounding errors. All right, they round, they don't round off the monthly payment. This might be like 10.8 something something cents. So all of these are off. Then calculating the interest and such gets off. So you'll find out that each one of these is an exact to the penny rounding. The very last payment may be plus or minus a couple of cents to make that come out even. All right, so the exact amount due is to the penny correct. Then we have the amount paid. That's the amount that the person actually paid for that period. That gets broken down into the regular payment and the extra payment. We'll talk about extra payment in a second. They can pay more in a period to, to try and pay down their balance. The principal and interest for each one of the payments, properly backward loaded, of course. And then you'll see the end balance over here. The end balance over here is the same as the start beginning balance over here. Down the bottom, you'll see all your totals. This should be correct to the penny right here, the exact amount of the loan. That's the total amount of principal. The total amount of interest paid is over here. You'll see over here we have the total due as of today since I backed this up. This started back in uh, December of 2012. It's currently uh, January 9th, so both of these payments are due, about $2,500, right? So that will show you the amount due as of today. Regular payments made as of today, so you'll see how past due they might be. Right here is their payment history. Now, people don't always make payments that are exactly what their payment's supposed to be. Sometimes they overpay, sometimes they underpay. So this will give you an exact history of all of their payments, and you can see what exact date they made the payment on. So let's log a payment. I'll come down here, click on Record New Payment. You get a couple of prompts. First, the payment amount, which defaults to the amount due. That's what their payment should be. I'll hit OK. And then the payment date which, again, defaults to today's date. Let's say this was December's payment. I'm putting in some old information. So let's say 12, 15, 12, and then I'll hit OK. All right, now, here's what happens. First, the payment gets logged over here. So you can see the total amount of payments. All right, each payment gets logged. Then it takes the money and applies it to the mortgage. All right, so there, 1284.11 is the amount paid, and that's exactly the amount of the payment, so it's regular payment, no extra amount and nothing here has changed. All right, if they underpay, let's say it's the next month now, let's say they underpay, so let's record a new payment. Let's say they only pay $500, and they pay it on uh, 1 3. Okay, the payment gets tracked over here, so you can see $500 was paid on 1 3. The amount paid was $500, regular payment $500. Okay, now let's say they come in with the rest of the payment, so again, we'll record a new payment. This time, let's say they pay $900. Okay, let's look at what happened. They paid $900 on one nine. So the amount paid for this period is actually $1,400. Regular amount is the amount due, and then an extra payment of one fifteen eighty nine is now applied as an extra payment. This brings down their principal because that amount here goes against the principal due, which brings down their total amount of interest they owe as well. Notice that last payment now is even less because they're paying down their principal. Now, it has been suggested as an option, instead of making that extra payment go toward the principal, to apply it toward the next period. I know my car loan works that way, the car loan that I just finished paying off. If I pay more, it actually goes toward the next payment. They don't pay down my principal. So that's an option. If anyone really wants that, let me know, and I can possibly add that as an upgrade to the database for the future. But as of right now, payment overages go against the principal. That's how most bank mortgages work, even though my car loan doesn't do that.
But that could certainly be an option up here, right? Extra payments go toward the principal or the next payment. Because then we just leave the 1284 here and put the next amount down here for the next period. So that's really a matter of you know, what you, what you want to do with that extra money. Now, there is an update schedule button down here. You shouldn't ever really have to click on that because when a payment is applied, it, uh, it automatically runs the update schedule. You can manually adjust these if you want to. If you decide, for example, let's say this $900 check bounces, you just come in here and clear that and then get rid of the information in here. All right, so I'd click delete. Are you sure? Yes. And then I'd come back over here and change this back to 500 and it corrects everything for you. So that is the database in a nutshell. That's how it works. Uh, the copy that you download off the, da off the website has just a working copy that you can play with. You can actually edit it. Uh, for a small fee that's listed on the website, you get a full downloadable copy that you can edit. You can right-click in here, go into Design View. You can change all these things. You can play around with them. You can incorporate this into your own database. You can view my source code. You can come in here and make whatever changes you want to make. You can distribute it freely if you want to, as long as you are not simply just reselling this. If you're going to you know, customize it for your own purposes, that's fine. If you would like pricing on having me customize this for you, if you have some custom changes you want to make, I'd be happy to make them for you. Please contact me. The information's on the web page on how to get in touch with me to make customizations for you. Also, if enough people want to see a video tutorial on how I built this database then I would be more than happy to put it together as a seminar. All right, there's lots of good stuff in here. And, and it, took me, it took me about a day to build this. It took me probably a good solid six or seven hours. A lot of the, a lot of the code having to deal with uh, the rounding and making sure that last payment comes out even and, and applying payments where they belong, that, that, there's some tricky logic in there, but I'd be more than happy to put together a seminar if enough people are interested. So if so, contact me. Again, there's a link on the website. And let me know that you're interested in seeing that video seminar. But if not, if you have any other questions about this database and how it works, please feel free to contact me. Thanks. So if you're interested in obtaining a copy of my loan amortization database template, you can find it on my website at 599cd.com or accesslearningzone.com under the templates section. You can download a free sample working copy of the database. And for a small fee, you can get a full editable royalty-free copy of this database as well. And of course, if you have any questions, please contact me at accesslearningzone.com. Thank you.